imbecile. You imbecile. Abu Talib was a mushrik. Abu Talib died as a kafir. I'd like to talk about someone whose heart was filled with remembrance, filled with faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, filled with piety. Amir al Mu'mineen says that the heart of Abu Talib was filled with so much faith that on the day of judgment, believers, the Quran tells us, they will walk and their light will precede them. With the exception of the light of Rasulullah, Fatima al Zahra, Amir al Mu'mineen, Al Hassan al Hussein, and the nine Imams from the descendants of Imam al Hussein, the Imam says, the light of Abu Talib will outshine all the other lights. The greatest protector, the shield of Rasulullah, the one who defended the Holy Prophet to, to an extent that the Messenger of God says, Ma nalat Qurayshun. شَيْئًا مِمَّا أَكْرَهْ حَتَّى مَاتَ أَبُوْ طَالِبٍ Quraysh was never able to achieve their nefarious objectives against me until Abu Talib died. While Abu Talib was alive, no one could lay a finger on Rasulullah. Let me mention a hadith to you. This is cited in, it's narrated in Rawdatul Kafi, which is the last volume of the blessed book of Al-Kafi. It says that the Quraysh once made a threat that they were going to harm Rasulullah. They might ambush him, they might kill him, they might do something, they threatened to hurt the Prophet. Abu Talib called his son Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said to him, Ya Ali, halumma ilayhi, come to me quickly. Imam Ali came to his father. He said to him, my son, now, to put this into context, Abu Lahab was one of the leaders of the idolaters, one of the arch nemeses of Rasulullah, one of the main enemies of the Prophet, but he was Abu Talib's brother. Abu Talib says to his son, go to your uncle Abu Lahab's house. I want you to go and speak to him. Then he says to him, فَإِنْ فَتَحَ لَكَ الْبَابِ If he open the door, then go in. If he doesn't open the door, فَكْسِرْهُ Break the door and go inside. Then go and tell him that my father tells you, مَنْ كَانَ عَمُّهُ عَيْنَهُ فِي النَّاسِ Whoever has a protector like Abu Talib will never be humiliated. Go tell him. As long as there is a drop of blood coursing through my veins, no one will lay a hand on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In Sha'b Abi Talib, where they put the nascent and small Muslim community under an extreme and absolute embargo, where they pushed them into a valley Surrounded by mountains, they sealed off the entire area and they left them there without food, without water, except under extreme conditions. Every single night, Abu Talib, he would wake up the Holy Prophet and he would tell him, Ya Rasulullah, get up, get up. They might ambush you here, they might attack you. He would relocate Rasulullah and have his own son sleep in the Prophet's bed. We're all familiar with the story of Mabit. Amir al Mu'mineen sacrificing himself, sleeping instead of Rasulullah in his bed, so that if they were to come and kill the Prophet, they would kill Ali ibn Abi Talib. But Amir al Mu'mineen did that numerous times, not just once. Amir al Mu'mineen would sleep in that bed in the same manner, so that when they come, they would think it's Rasulullah. They don't go look, looking for him elsewhere. One day, the hadith states, Amir al Mu'mineen came to Abi Talib. He said to him, Abba, my father, I think that I'm going to get killed tonight. In other words, perhaps they had seen spies, they had seen some enemy activity that led them to think that the Holy Prophet was going to be ambushed. So Amir al-Mu'mineen says to his father, he says, I think I'm going, to get, I'm going to get killed. Abu Talib responded with a few verses of poetry that are so beautiful, in which he says to him, my son, be patient. You'll be rewarded in the afterlife. You are sacrificing yourself 
for the righteous one, the son of the righteous one. In other words, it's worth it, my son, even if you get killed. Who does that? Letting your own son get killed for someone else, even if he's your nephew. Abu Talib was a mushrik. Abu Talib died as a kafir. You imbeciles. He says to his son, it's worth it, go. Even if you must, must be killed. Amir al-Mu'mineen responds to him, again in poem, in verse. He says to him, oh father, I didn't say that I'm going to get killed because I am not patient, because I'm afraid. I said that to tell you that I am ready. You raised me for a day like this. You taught me to die for Rasulullah if I must. And I'm only telling you this so that you would know I will forever obey you. Whatever you tell me, I will do. The reason Ali ibn Abi Talib became Ali was because he was the son of a person like Abu Talib. Someone comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen. He said to the Imam, you're such a great man. It's a shame, however, that you're the son of a person who's boiling in the inferno. Your father was a kafir, it's such a shame. From the Imam's response, we can deduce that this man wasn't just ignorant. The Imam said to him, may Allah block your mouth. How dare you? Have you no shame? Abi finnar wa ana qasimul jannati wa nar. My father is in the fires of hell and I am the one who decides who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Then the Imam went on speaking about the merits and virtues of Abu Talib. The poetry of Abu Talib is famous for declaring his faith and his allegiance to Rasulullah and to the religion of Islam. And so in, in spite of the filth that we find in Sahih Muslim and other sources about how Abu Talib was a mushrik and towards the end of his life, the Holy Prophet came to him. He said to him, please say the testimony of faith, declare your belief in Allah. And Abu Talib refused to do that despite these insults. And then they tell us that you insult the companions of Rasulullah. I've said this to so many people in Mecca, Medina, elsewhere. I've said to them, let's say, let's say there are those among us who insult the companions of Rasulullah or God forbid the wives of Rasulullah. Well, what about the ones who insult the very family of Rasulullah? What about the father of Rasulullah, Abdullah, who is considered a mushrik in your false religion? What about Amina, who is considered a mushrik? What about Abu Talib? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَوَجَدَكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى God found you as an orphan and He gave you refuge. Who gave him refuge? Who was the agent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and offered refuge and safety and protection to Rasulullah other than Abu Talib? Who? Ya Abu Talib, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. May we be able to see your face on the day of judgment. May we receive your intercession. As one hadith says, that if Abu Talib asked Allah for the forgiveness of every person on the face of the earth, Allah would answer him. Allah would grant him that intercession. May Allah grant us the intercession of Abi Talib, this oppressed man.